JJ. JJ. You missed a spot. You missed a spot right there. There you go. Good job. <laughs> Consider this horribly broke or just kind of broke? Yeah, so what work, I was going to say, there's no saving that hard. <laughs> <laughs> the tire wear can tell you a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah. Like you can come train for free. That's incredible. That's pretty cool. Why don't you come train? Why don't I come train? Do you need to train? <laughs> no, I'm just. Yeah, Hensley, when you watch this one day, just know that mommy and daddy love you. That's our journey for today. <laughs> Packed up, ready to go to our next spot, leaving Twin Mills RV Resort. Uh, map manager is super nice here. Uh, this is a big campground. It's got, it looks like it's got some history to it. There's a lot of sites. There's a beach. There's a playground. There's pools. I mean, it's quite a bit here. But as far as like thousand trails goes, like it might be hit or miss if you get a 30 amp or a 50 amp. But uh, we did get full hookups, so that was nice. But even nicer is we have a solution for our broken awning. So when our awning broke, my biggest fear was that we couldn't find the parts. First of all, that we couldn't find the parts to get it fixed. And then second of all, who are we gonna get to work on this? How long do we have to wait? Well, we actually had liver components reach out to us and said, hey, we do that. <laughs> Why don't you bring it by? We'll work on the awning and, <laughs> there's your stand. And we'll get to do a tour of Lippert. Matt's saying we're good. Hensley, you ready to check out Lippert? Just can't stay away from you guys. How you Look doing? Look at the haircut. You You're like looking it? Yeah. Snazzy. Yeah. Oh, isn't he adorable? <laughs> All right. So Matt and the crew are gonna be working on this. We're gonna be walking inside, taking a walk around. Would you consider this horribly broke or just kind of broke? You based got on your what money's you... worth. I was gonna say there's no saving that hardware. <laughs> <laughs> I was not optimistic on the hardware. This is the technical institute portion of Lippert. Is that would that be the right description? Yes. Yeah, so this right here would be the LCI Technical Institute. Okay. This is where we invite technicians from all over the world here to do a to, to do training, train on our, all of our products. So let's say if I'm like a mobile tech, right? So I could like mobile tech, I would come here for training. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Mobile techs, um, OEMs, uh -huh. um, which is the original equipment manufacturers, uh, regular technicians, those folks that are at mom and pop shops or all the way to camping world and lazy days, and those technicians come here as well. Like we've talked about too, like. A lot of people looking to get on the road full time, they're looking, for, they're like, oh, well, I can't do anything technical, like with a computer, internet, or YouTubing or whatever. What could I do? And we've mentioned a lot, like, there's a huge demand for mobile techs right now. I mean, do you see, does that still seem true? I mean, yes, most definitely. definitely. Yeah. I'm getting any video of my gut. <laughs> I'll cut it out. I'm way over here on the edge. Just Photoshop it or do some awesome videos. Yeah, he's he's got, six pack abs. There you go. Maybe have like a beautiful head of hair and six pack would be awesome. I might have abs. <laughs> Just like in high school. This fifth wheel frame has got two leveling systems on it. It's got the ground control three uh, electric leveling system and then it also has the hydraulic level up system. Okay. It's got, uh, this one's got an electric and a hydraulic through frame slide on it. You don't, you don't make, the, you make the frames? Yeah. You make, you make all this? Yes. Yeah. Everything we're seeing here, yeah. you guys make the all frames, this. Okay. The frames, okay. axles. Okay, I knew you did the jacks. Systems, and the, yeah. jacks, okay. Yeah. So I don't know about you guys, but one of the first things I thought of when I thought of Lippert components, because I knew they made more than this, but a lot of times you think of the axles, but they make way more than just the axles. If you're sitting in your RV or you're wanting an RV, like up to 85% of that RV, that's Lippert. <laughs> so, so these guys know their stuff, man. Marissa wants me to get one of these. <laughs> They're nice. If what? A lot of trucking. If it's an up and down, would that be better for airbags for the truck first and then that? Or do you think that'd be better first? Sometimes what happens most of the time is your airbags in, inside your truck, if you get those in this, they kind of fight against the truck. Ah, which one would be better to go with first then if you're getting an up and down, like a lot of bumpy roads in the This like one right here, I like because it controls the up and down and then also the trucking. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, you have so your, even. Okay. River plate here and then also. So unless I'm towing multiple trailers, really, I, it would make sense to get this on the RV instead of the truck yeah. so they don't work against each other. Okay. 
man, you're the guy to ask. That was. <laughs> I love seeing it. It's like it's like instant answer. When you see the instant answer, you know that. Uh, <laughs> if, if they like turn around, you can tell they're googling it. It's like a. <laughs> in in the midst of our training, what we do is kind of separate um, separate mockups. So we want the best way to do hands-on is as little of people as possible. So if we can pill them out to like a group of ah, three or yeah, two, yeah. Um, that works best so, for us. And how we do that is we create scenarios. So as you're walking around here, you see scenario number four, there's scenario number six. That's there's cool. some scenarios over here on the table. Yeah, yeah. Um, so after we do the crawl portion of the class, which is inside the classroom, going uh -huh. over to PowerPoint and going over theory and things like that, then they'll come over here and kind of prove what they just learned, right? So um, they'll get this, uh, this booklet with scenarios in it. And so we kind of try to teach them a path to, um, I guess, diagnose mm -hmm. the, the concern. And, and that's what you see here. So it was okay. like, hey, test the battery first. You yeah, know? yeah. Test the power first. Is it getting us sufficient enough power? And then what's, what's your voltage? So you've already set all these to have the problems. It's their job to go around different scenarios and figure out what problem they're solving that's yes, going sir. on with yep. it. Cool. Which one's your toughest problem? Probably this one over here. It's got a pressure switch. That the is, six? Yeah, the six point okay. scenario. We don't want anybody to cheat. You didn't hear that if you're going to come in here. <laughs> He's not going to tell you. That. Yeah, yeah. It could be anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys touring the snack machines over here? What drink would you get? Bring it in the box. But I didn't she have one and I said if she's good. Yeah. And then she asked her, if you were good, which one would you pick? Where'd it go? What are you doing, buddy? Playing some foosball? Right there. Here we go. Right here. Ready? Yeah, there's a bunch in there. If people are coming to train here, how long did you say? They're here doing the training, like in a row, or is it? It's uh, here at our in-house training. Yeah, if you were doing that. Three full days. Three full days. So they'll okay. come in on Tuesday at eight o'clock in the morning. And they'll start registering, okay. meet up here in the cafeteria, eat okay. some breakfast, and right there at eight o'clock, then we start the classes. Okay. And so they're they're all um, in different teams. So okay. we kind of color code them and stuff like that. Okay. So there could be eight different classes happening at one time. I haven't even mentioned the best part, like the training is free. So totally incredible. I've already learned some stuff today. It's really, really awesome what you guys are doing. This is another class. This would be one of our one control classes. And um, pretty, we're, we're really proud about this class right here because we were able to teach the technician how to build a one control system from start to finish. So we'll give them these, these kits. If you have this, you'll have a, either a five inch or a eight inch LCD screen mm -hmm. or a OCTP or one control touch panel is what we call it. And, um, and this can operate multiple things in your unit. And it just depends on the options that you have, right? So it could be just lights or just leveling or everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the technician will, uh, will get these different modules we give them canvas wires, power wires, and they actually build the system, program it, name features, and all that stuff from start to finish. We believe that um, we have to teach the older stuff too. Like at the very beginning, we used gamma boards with the little remote controls. Yeah. And then, so this is kind of like the evolution of our electronics um, until we get, we get here to our X boards. Is this the most recent? Mm-hmm. More scenarios. Yeah, more scenarios. Um, brakes, how to wire up brakes, test brakes. What's inside your axle? You know, your bearings, your braces. Oh, cool. and, yeah, oh yeah. Nice. Even what does tire wear tire, yeah, tire okay. mean? You That's know? super valuable. I would think on a consumer level, this is super valuable over here for something you can see and maybe diagnose on your own, right? They just walk yeah, around, sure. see some weird tire wear, and because it's not just about seeing how much tread you've got left on. I mean, so this one's showing center wear. Okay, so right what here. would cause center wear? So if you're getting some center wear, normally that's an overinflated tire. Ah, okay. Because then the tire okay. kind of buckles like okay. this right here. And that would usually be axle related, those two? Um, probably, it or not could always? be, um, but if, you're, if your axle is slightly um, out of parallel with the other one, then you would have outer outer wear here uh -huh. and inner wear over here. Okay. So okay. it could, these, these, the tire wear could tell you a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah. A Eurovan, we've, it came to us from the UK. 
Um, one of our employees over there built it, and we used to use it for shows. Uh -huh. um, they've retired it, and now we're using it for a training um, mock-up. Apparently right now, Chet is working on putting a wind control system in it, and then also rebuilding the slide out on the other side. Yeah, I can safely say I've never seen a slide like this. It's a... Just the fridge in there? What's in that? Shower. Shower? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yep, We're not a guest. This is neat too. Yeah, we don't sell those. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a one-off. <laughs> I'll quit pointing you. What year is this coming out? <laughs> hey, how you doing? Not too bad. How are you? Good. Blood wires. So you asked the question how hard it would it be to install a uh, wind control system in your, your RV aftermarket? <laughs> uh, this is, not this bad. Is you it. just have to tear out every <laughs> wall in the RV, right? Pretty much. <laughs> Oh, wow. Check that out. Oh. <laughs> That's slick. I like it. You want you make intra doors like that? The slide like that? Uh, not slide, but open. But okay. Full panel. The full panel glass. Like the main intra door, not like one going into a yeah. patio or something? Main really? Intro door. Yep. When did that start? I've uh, been working on it for about a year now. Okay. Is, is, it, is it out on the models coming out that are out now? Some. Some. Okay, so it's starting to slide out this year. Okay, okay. See what I did there with the slide out? Anyway, so <laughs> that was swinging out, but... Uh, <laughs> so he, he's always driving this thing. <laughs> this is a board that kind of tracks um, our numbers and how, how efficient we're, we're being and becoming. So you can see we started the training program in 2013, and that year we hit 1,616 people. There in 2019, we were up at uh, 5,465 uh, technicians that we had trained. What's the status of the physical facility right now as far as training? Like... It's still pretty much like the life that we're living now. I mean, it's still up in the air. We're not quite for sure. Um, it's kind of on hold right now. Yeah, it, okay. is, it is on hold. We have a plan to, to open up, but when we can open up, we're not, we're not quite for sure. Working on the home stretch on the awning. This is what's left of the old one here. One side. Yeah, it got a little bit bent and broke. The other one, the arm didn't even, it just totally snapped in too fast. Room. Now Lippert let us pull in here at their tech training facility just because it's an easy off, you know, from the, from the road for us to do this. But uh, typically they said they do most of the repairs over the service center, um, which I'll have those details in the uh, description if you want those. Now the service center though, not really awnings and stuff like that, but usually like chassis down. If you got problems with your jacks or your you know, the frame, axles, all that kind of stuff. Like, these are definitely your guys because, well, they, they probably made that stuff. <laughs> so they know what they're doing over there. So if you have an awning issue or something like that, um, Matt here said he's going to give me some contact info that I'll get to you guys. That'll also be in the description of a mobile tech. Because, I mean, really, if you're going to get a repair like the awning, um, you know, you don't want to have to take it to a dealer or a service facility or something like that um, a mobile tech would be really great at doing something like that because they're going to come to your site do the repair and get it all done you don't have to like drop off and possibly leave your rig or wait with your rig or anything like that whereas like chassis issues yeah it's probably a little tougher to do that kind of stuff at your site so you've got repair facilities like Lifford that are going to be great for that kind of thing Ooh, that's way quieter and smoother than before Nice. That was an awesome stop. <laughs> <laughs> lots of fun people. We got to meet lots of people oh, here too. So incredible. love meeting new people. It was really cool too, just getting to chat with them and hear about how they just really want to help the RV community mm -hmm. and was just asking us questions like, how can we serve the community? What do you guys mm, need? Good, yeah. And so I just love hearing that and getting that feedback. Because I mean, again, this is for free. Like you can come train for free. That's incredible. That's pretty cool. Why don't you come train? Why don't I come train? Do I need to be trained? <laughs> no, I'm just Yeah, 101. Uh, <laughs> do not leave your awning out when winds are above 30 miles an hour. So. full hookup sites over to the right side not for us they're all gone so we're looking for non full hookup sites <laughs> so yeah thousand trails another thousand trails pretty much all of them are first come first serve so you're just kind of taking 
depends on when you come in. Fortunately, we're coming in kind of late in the day, so we're kind of getting the getting the scraps here. This is one here. Hopefully, we can really Left, straight back, stop. So we ultimately had a choice. Not a choice of full hookups, but <laughs> a choice of whether or not we wanted the water view or there is another site available that would fit us up here, like right next to the playground, which is good because we can see Hensley from the playground, but look pretty hectic up there. So we're kind of tucked in back here a little bit more. Marissa's checking to see. I told her I'd kind of start on this. If she looked at that one and said, no, nah, we need to do that for the kids, we'll do it. But we'll see what she says. Hensley, when you watch this one day, just know that mommy and daddy love you. Sorry about the background noise. We're kind of uh, right next to a playground. <laughs> but, uh, so a couple of things I learned from Lippert about awnings, cause you know, of course I had the question like, is there something I could have done different as far as like, probably in my case, the main thing, maybe a weather sensor one would have got it in faster. I don't know, possibly. There's no way to know for sure. Uh, definitely should have paid attention to my weather app. That was a big goof on my part. But you know, I also asked, you know, these awnings, are there some that are better than others or built differently than others? And so this awning is a carefree awning. And, um, and a lot of this isn't good or bad, it's just sort of different philosophies on how they build awnings. This awning has sort of like a, um, it has like this, you know, extra support arm here and it does still have the hydraulic. And we park next to people with other awnings and ours does seem, at least from what I can tell when the wind lightly blows and stuff, because we've had it out quite a bit at our home base you know 10 15 mile per hour winds like it moves just a little bit but it's really not that bad but the difference is you know and we've seen some other ones where they really can start moving sometimes with the wind but one of the big differences because you've got you've got carefree you got Dometic you've got Lippert makes their own awnings as well so from Lippert's hardware from what I understand you know there might be a little more give and a little more sway you might see some of these other brands besides carefree but at the same time they build them intentionally that way so that if you do get an extreme gust because my awning just, uh, it just doesn't know when to give. I mean, it just, it like doesn't give, doesn't give, and then snap. <laughs> it just sort of flipped back, you know, behind the RV. But the other ones, like a lot of times it's just the hydraulic arm is all that'll break on those. And so all you gotta do is replace a $50 hydraulic arm and you're good to go, which you could possibly even do yourself. Versus mine, you know, it snapped both those support arms and without a crew of four guys, I couldn't even get that awning back in, much less, I mean, no hope of me fixing it pretty much. You have to replace the entire arm on mine once it broke. And and now honestly, like from year to year, they're still trying to figure out the right combination of do we make heavy duty awnings that add weight to the RV or do we make them lighter? You know, the RV industry is always looking for that balance uh, between, you know, functionality, weight, repairability, all that kind of stuff. Oh, where'd he go? Where'd the O go? Did you take the O? Oh, you're right in the camera. Oh, no, no, you're gonna smudge it. Hey, did we take one for the team? Park over here by the playground. So we're loving the new app, Nomad Near Me. I hope you guys who have got to check that out are loving it as much as we are. In the first week, this is super cool to me, in the first week of launching the app, we show up to a campground and we see that we have two friends of ours in the campground that we probably never would have even known they were staying in the same campground as us. If it wasn't for the app showing us that we were super close to each other. Yeah, we're just there two nights and like some of these campgrounds, I mean, it was 200 plus sites, so. And what's super cool about it is, so we got a hand delivered copy of <laughs> Rootless Living Magazine, which is a magazine for RVing it's and full. Right on my face, that's awesome. Hold on, get right there, here you go, do the rest of the video. <laughs> So go. what's super this cool? Is the best looking video we've ever done. <laughs> All right, there you go. Um, so we were honored to to be asked to be a part of this magazine that's for RV full time living and RVers, and it is super cool that we were in the same campground as the creators, and we got a hand delivered copy that we hadn't got to see yet. So you can check this out digitally or you can go to rootlessliving.com and, and get a copy. So, super fun. Well, that's our journey for today. Um, JJ's over here being quieter than he should be, so I'm gonna go see what he's doing. Probably into something. Yeah.
JJ? I guess a toilet paper laying out. Okay, yeah, you better get that. JJ! <laughs> I hope that microphone picked him up growling. <laughs> Did you hear him growl? <laughs> that was the funniest part. <laughs> get over here. Come here. Watch out. So, that's our journey for today. <laughs> so that's our journey for today. Until next time. Catch you guys later. And in case you guys are curious, I'm always listening to background noises while we're summing up. This is how many takes it took for us to get that. That's our journey for today. This is our... F oh no. So that's our journey for today. 30 seconds. I'll be right back. So that's our journey for... And so that's our journey for today. And so that's our journey for today. Until next time, we'll catch you guys later. And so that's our journey for today. And so that's our journey for today. Until next time.